What up techies? Every few million years or so, an object from outer space collides with our planet. It's thought that the last time this happened was 65 million years ago when an asteroid hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, causing the extinction of the dinosaurs. This video discusses what would happen if an object collided with the planet. What NASA scientists uncovered recently may astound and startle you. Imagine being in North America 65 million years ago, during the dinosaur's reign, and gazing up at the night sky. Perhaps you caught a glimpse of what appeared to be a bright star off to the side. Keep an eye on it for a bit, and you'll see it's getting brighter in the sky. You'd be staring at an asteroid that travels between 11 and 45,000 miles per hour. Soon after, the asteroid moves toward the Yucatan Peninsula, where it strikes. The Earth's atmosphere behaves like water under such collision conditions. In the same way that pebbles in a pond decelerate rapidly when tossed into the water, Smaller space rocks known as meteors also burn up in the friction of the atmosphere before falling to Earth. Nonetheless, the Chicxulub asteroid's impact on Earth is like a boulder thrown into a water bucket. After only three seconds, it had descended through 60 miles of the atmosphere at its constant speed. Screaming above Central America, the asteroid unleashes one of the most audible sounds on the planet. An asteroid impact would have wiped out any animal within range of the asteroid, which is why the dinosaurs were likely afraid and scattered in all directions. No four-legged animal weighing more than 25 kilograms would survive, except sea turtles and crocodiles. As the mountain-sized space rock falls, the air itself is unable to escape. When air is compressed tightly, it heats up rapidly to tens of thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. Much of the shallow sea surrounding Yucatan will be vaporized long before the asteroid even makes contact. The rock slams into the bedrock as soon as the debris is cleared away. A series of events are set in motion at that precise instant. As the asteroid slams into Earth, it exerts such tremendous pressure that dirt and rock begin to flow like liquids. Earth's ebb and flow are like a person doing a cannonball in a swimming pool's double splash. A delayed vertical splash occurs when the asteroid's cavity returns to the surface, which follows the first splash in all directions. The first wall of Earth to be carved out at the time of impact was more than 32 kilometers high. At 1,600 kilometers per hour, the Earth rises higher than Mount Everest due to the delayed vertical splash caused by the impact crater. In a series of secondary explosions, this mountain of rubble crumbles almost completely within minutes, leaving behind a smaller mound known as a crater's peak ring. Instantaneously, 7.5 billion tons of rock speeding at 10 miles per second smash with the Yucatan and converts its kinetic energy into scorching heat, resulting in an instantaneous explosion. In terms of energy output, the Chicxulub impactor generates around 1 septillion, 300 sextillion kilojoules of power, 1 billion Hiroshima atomic bombs of energy. Soil, rock, and air molecules are excited to temperatures well above the surface of the sun by kinetic energy supplied from the asteroid. An expanding firestorm of plasma with a temperature of more than 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit is created by the ionization of the air, which rips electrons from the atoms. The combination of the impact shockwave, rapidly expanding heated air, and the Earth's near instantaneous conversion to gas results in a huge blast wave of pressure that travels at over 1,600 kph. The blast wave would melt you in Texas, deafen you in New York, and tear out glass windows in Buenos Aires if an asteroid hit the same area today. Impactor Chicxulub is like a bell ringing out over the planet. Earth's crustal waves travel out from the impact zone at a speed of 4 kph. As a result of these waves, earthquakes with fault slippage occur worldwide. Within 30 minutes of the hit, you would have felt the Earth trembling even if you were on the other side of the world. The impact triggers tsunamis as high as skyscrapers. Within an hour, the first of them impacted the Gulf Coast. Waves up to one, feet high slam into what is now Mexico and the southern United States, causing scores of miles of coastline to be inundated. Waves surge up riverbeds like 30 feet tidal bores, briefly reversing the flow of rivers. After a tsunami hits the eastern coast of the United States, it reaches a maximum height of 600 feet and slams into Europe, Africa, and the Mediterranean Sea coast six hours later. Each shoreline on the planet is hit within 15 hours of the collision. The ocean carries away everything in its path and returns it to the sea when the tide goes out. Even though it already sounds like the end of the world, additional catastrophes are on the way. When the big rock strikes, its splash accounts for 25 trillion tons of Earth that it launches on ballistic trajectories, some at speeds that exceed Earth's escape velocity. It is possible that some of these rocks escaped Earth's gravitational pull and ended up on the moon. Within an hour, most of the expelled material had returned to Earth. There were tektites as huge as buses, but the majority were the size of marbles, and they slammed into the Earth at speeds ranging from 100 to 160 kilometers per hour. Even if the glass bullets missed the dinosaurs, 
they were still lethal. When these tektites fall, they generate enough heat from contact with the atmosphere to start flames worldwide. According to some estimates, returning embers can heat the earth to a temperature of an oven on broil. Many of the world's trees have burned down, which may explain why only ground nesting birds are left standing. All the larger land animals that have escaped extinction are equipped with a way to cool themselves in the sweltering heat, as little mammals, snakes, and lizards, as well as crocodiles and turtles. They could either burrow like these animals or escape into the water. No matter how far away the poor dinosaurs were from the heat source, they'd still need to find a way to escape it. Chicxulub strikes an area rich in oil, and sulfur as a fatal blow to the dinosaurs' hopes of a long existence. Atmospheric acid rain was ejected by the impact, which sent 100 billion tons of sulfuric acid vapor into the atmosphere and 30,000 quadrillion gallons of water. Tens of feet of snow can fall in a single day. Because Chicxulub vaporizes and explodes 150 football fields worth of oil from the Yucatan bedrock, the global deluge doesn't persist long. It condenses in the stratosphere as a thick, dark layer of black soot that covers the earth like paint. Unlike sulfur dioxide and wildfire smoke, carbon dioxide does not rain back down because it circulates well above the cloud layer. That, of course, is a major issue, so it will persist in the atmosphere for at least two to three years decreasing the quantity of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface by 90%. First, the returning tektites provide oven-like heat, followed by long-lasting freezing. The average global temperature falls by nearly 50 degrees. During this period, the only locations on Earth that weren't frozen solid were Madagascar, India, and Indonesia. It is 80% less rain in the global freeze because the evaporation almost completely stops. The entire planet is reduced to aridity outside these tropical islands. Do we have to worry about another one of these monstrous rocks hitting us? Scientists used a supercomputer to study asteroid evolution using data from known asteroids. The Chicxulub asteroid may have come from the Uic cloud, a sphere of junk at the solar system's outer frontier. According to the two-member team of Avi Loeb, and Amir Suraj. It's possible that Jupiter's gravitational pull threw off the course of a much larger comet, causing it to collide with the Sun and fragment. They can cross our orbit and strike our planet once every 250 to 730 million years. According to this research, a gigantic boulder from outer space could strike us at any time. On December 11, 2021, NASA announced that an asteroid called 4660 Nereus which was 330 meters long, had flown by Earth at a speed of 6.5 kilometers per second, or 14,719 miles per hour. You might not think that is very close, but a small change in its orbit could put it on a direct path with Earth and cause it to crash into it in the future. Astronomers are keeping an eye on this potentially deadly meteorite. Don't forget that the asteroid that caused the explosion in Chelyabinsk, Russia in 2013 was only 20 meters wide. We don't know how to protect the Earth from a big space rock, which is a problem. NASA's DART mission, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, will try to see if a spacecraft can find an asteroid on its own and crash into it on purpose. This would cause a kinetic impact that could push the asteroid away from a path that would put it in danger of hitting Earth. Dimorphos is a small moon of the asteroid Didymos that DART is trying to reach. The spacecraft will arrive when the Didymos system is 11 million kilometers from Earth at the end of September 2022 but it is thought that the collision will only change the moonlit speed by a tiny amount, less than 1%. A small spacecraft hitting an asteroid 10 kilometers wide or bigger and moving at more than 72,000 kilometers per second won't be enough to stop it. It's no secret that the world is in a bit of a pickle. Global warming, overpopulation, and political turmoil are just a few of the challenges we face. So, it's not surprising that some people are considering apocalyptic scenarios. In particular, many are wondering if we might need to use nuclear weapons in order to ensure our survival. While this may seem drastic, it's important to remember that we're facing some serious threats. And, if nuclear weapons are the only way to destroy an asteroid or stop a devastating pandemic, then we may have no choice but to use them. Of course, this is all speculation at this point, but it's certainly something worth thinking about. Thanks for joining us, and let us know your thoughts in the comments.